Hello friends, this video on P-Block part 51 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's see the first important element, chlorine. We'll see the preparation of this. So the chlorine was discovered in 1774 actually by reacting my HCl and MnO2 in the lab and a gas was formed and this gas was actually green in color, greenish yellow. And this word chlorine came from its Greek word chloro that means greenish yellow. Greenish yellow is called chloro in Greek and thus this word chlorine came in 1774. Okay. So in lab if you want to prepare chlorine you actually heat MnO2 with the concentrated HCl. So I have MnO2 and I have concentrated HCl. You heat this, you get MnCl2, you get some water and you also get chlorine gas. And this is my chlorine gas. Okay, instead of HCl actually I can also use NaCl and H2SO4. So my MnO2 is same. Instead of HCl I will use my NaCl and H2SO4 combination. Okay? Because this is replacement of HCl. You heat, you get MnCl2, NaHSO4, some water and again a chlorine gas. Okay. You can also prepare chlorine by action of hydrochloric acid on KMnO4. So you take KMnO4, you take hydrochloric acid, you react, you get KCl, MnCl2, some water and some chlorine gas. If you want, you can write the balanced reaction. This is my balanced reaction. Okay, this is how you prepare chlorine in the lab. But chlorine is very important compound, important gas, and we used, uh, we prepare this a lot in a large scale in industry. So in industry at a large scale, if you want to prepare, we can't use all this uh, method because it will be costly. When you talk about the industrial preparation, the money matters, it has to be cheap. So in industry, it is uh, prepared by a lot of method. The first is the Dacon's process. So in Dacon's process, what we do is, we oxidize HCl gas by atmosphere oxygen in the presence of the catalyst, CuCl2. So I have HCl, I use the atmospheric oxygen and I use the CuCl2 uh, catalyst. You get this chlorine and water molecule. So oxidation of HCl gas by the atmospheric oxygen in the presence of CuCl2 catalyst. And this happened at 723 Kelvin. The second way to prepare chlorine industrially is we can do a electrolysis of NaCl solution. We do a electrolysis of NaCl solution. So we have this jar, we have uh, the anode and cathode, we have NaCl solution. So in that case, my chlorine gas is liberated at anode. So that is also one way of generating chlorine industrially. And also as a byproduct of many industrial process, byproduct of many industrial process, we have seen that in a lot of uh, reactions we see that chlorine is a byproduct. This chlorine gas is also collected in those kind of process. Let's see some properties of this uh, chlorine gas. The first thing is this gas. It is greenish yellow. Greenish yellow color gas. And this gas has a very bad smell. It has a very pungent smell. It's a very bad smell. It actually is suffocating smell like. Okay. This is very heavy than uh, water. So it is two to three times actually or two to five times heavier than water, heavier than air, sorry. So with the normal air, it is, it is very heavy. So it's settled down, okay, because it is heavier than air. It can easily be liquefied to a greenish yellow liquid. It can easily be liquefied because it boils at uh, 200 
239 Kelvin and you can easily liquefy it at the low temperature and high pressure. It is water soluble, we have seen that it reacts with water. It reacts with a lot of metals and non-metals also. We have seen some of the reaction, it react with, uh, we will see more, react with my metals and also a lot of non-metals to form chlorides. If we talk about the metals, example aluminium will react with chlorine to form AlCl3. We talk about sodium will react with chlorine to form ionic bond NaCl. Iron will react with chlorine to form FeCl3. You can write the balanced reaction. These are a metal reaction. If we talk about the non-metals reaction, these are metals reaction. Non-metal reaction, for example, phosphorus will react with chlorine to form PCl3. My sulfur also will react with chlorine to form S2Cl2. So if you see, chlorine reacts with both metals and non-metals. Chlorine has a great affinity for hydrogen. It has a very great affinity for hydrogen. You see, hydrogen and chlorine will react to form HCl. If, I, if I, hydrogen sulfide also it will react to form to HCl and sulfur. If you take a hydrocarbon, there also it will react form HCl and some carbon. It has great affinity for hydrogen. Okay. The next property is with excess ammonia, chlorine gives nitrogen and ammonium chloride. So you have NH3 and this is excess. And you would react with chlorine. What you get is NH2 plus ammonium chloride. This is what you get. But the same reaction you make chlorine excess, excess right? You take more, you, you have ammonia and you have chlorine, you make this chlorine excess this time. So what you get is NCl3 and 3 h so You see the same reaction, the same reaction in this case I had chlorine excess, you get NCl3 in hydrochloric acid that is nitrogen trichloride and this is nitrogen trichloride this is nitrogen trichloride and this is explosive okay and with excess of ammonia you get nitrogen gas and ammonium chloride okay in fact it has a lot more properties see this chlorine will react differently with NaOH, sodium hydroxide so or any alkali. With coal and dilute alkalis, this chlorine produces a mixture of chloride and hypochlorite. So this is NaOH or any alkali, coal and dilute I also the reaction. So I have NaOH, I have a chlorine, this is my coal and dilute. So this will form my sodium chloride, my NaOCl and water, right? So it is forming NaCl, sodium chloride, hypochlorite and water. But instead of cold and dilute, you take, uh, this is NaOH cold and dilute. This is, let's suppose I take any uh, alkali. This is my hot and concentrated. So you have this kind of scenario. I have any alkali, this is hot and concentrated. This if reacts with chlorine, it will give NaCl. It will give NaClO3 and water. So it gives chloride and chlorate. Okay. So you want, you can write the balanced reaction for this. Okay, now 
another reaction with dry slake lime it gives bleaching powder and we will talk about the bleaching powder so i have a dry slake lime coh2 and this chlorine will react with this to give cocl2 actually this is my bleaching powder and cscl2 and water is my byproduct okay in fact the chlorine we have seen a lot in the substitution and addition reaction in hydrocarbon right so we have seen for example i have a methane it reacts with chlorine so there is no double bond to break so we'll have a substitution reaction here you get cs3cl that is methyl chloride and hydrochloric acid so if you take an unsaturated hydrocarbon for example c2h4 that is ethene it will react with chlorine to form c2h4cl2 it's addition reaction this is addition reaction and this is my substitution reaction so we have seen these kind of reaction a lot in uh, organic chemistry this will be what 1 2 dichloroethane okay and if you talk about the chlorine water chlorine water actually on standing it will lose its yellow color because of the formation of hcl and hocl so i have a chlorine water chlorine and oxygen water so it will form hcl and hocl this is hypochlorous acid and this is my hydrochloric acid okay this hypochlorous acid actually it, it gives nascent oxygen it gives nascent oxygen and this nascent oxygen is actually responsible for bleaching action of the chlorine we'll talk about the bleaching powder then we'll talk about the uh, bleaching action actually this one give, will give hcl and nascent oxygen back this nascent oxygen is actually responsible for bleaching action okay and thus chlorine water is a strong bleaching agent this chlorine water is a strong bleaching agent strong bleaching agent thus this bleaching again is a permanent effect because it's nascent oxygen it it helps it fades the color of a particular article if we talk more about the property of chlorine chlorine actually is a very good oxidizing agent we have seen that right so it will oxidize my ferrous to ferric for example feso4 you add some acid and some chlorine it becomes fe2so4 3 and 2 h you see chlorine get reduced from 0 to minus 1 and iron got oxidized from plus 2 to plus 3 it's a good oxidizing agent actually more reaction for chlorine i have a sulfur dioxide in water and chlorine you react you get h2so4 and 2 hcl okay this was plus 4 oxidation state this became plus 6 oxidation state this got oxidized this was 0 this became minus 1 you got reduced i2 iodine also if you see reacting with chlorine you get hio3 and hcl you see chlorine is reduced and iodine is oxidized this is how much plus 5 chlorine is a good oxidizing agent and we have seen chlorine water is a good bleaching agent why because it gives nascent oxygen okay this chlorine water actually it will give to hcl and this nascent oxygen and this nascent oxygen actually it if you have a colored substance if you have a colored substance and you use this oxygen it become colorless fabric wood and this is a permanent effect okay let's talk, let's talk about the uses of this chlorine first is as i told uh, this chlorine has this nascent oxygen and it is used as a good bleaching agent so it is used for bleaching bleaching what bleaching wood pulp 
my to prepare paper the paper if you see is white color and it is prepared by bleaching wood pulp or it is also used for bleaching cotton and textile to give different uh, shades different color it is used for extraction of gold and platinum gold and platinum extraction it is used it is used to manufacture dye drugs detergent in all these things it is used it is also used to sterilize water it is also used to prepare poisonous gas this is uh, please remember this chlorine is used to prepare poisonous gas for example phosgene that is c o c l2 is a poisonous gas or in fact tear gas c c l3 no2 is again uh, prepared from uh, chlorine or mustard gas this is also a poisonous gas and this formula is cl ch2 ch2 s ch2 ch2 cl this is one formula and this is also prepared from chlorine we'll take some numerical on chlorine uh, the first numerical is write the balanced uh, equation for the reaction of chlorine with hot and concentrated sodium hydroxide is this a disproportional reaction justify we have just seen this reaction NaOH Cl2 this is hot and concentrated it gives NaCl NaClO3 and H2 okay chlorine oxidation state is 0 here it is minus 1 here it is plus 5 so if you see chlorine is getting reduced chlorine is getting oxidized since chlorine is getting both oxidized and reduced yes this is a disproportionation reaction okay the next is give the reason for bleaching action of chlorine we have told that the re the reason why chlorine is used as uh, bleaching agent is the chlorine when it reacts with water it will give you 2 hcl and one nascent oxygen and this nascent oxygen is responsible for bleaching action of chlorine Named to poisonous gas prepared from chlorine gas, we have just seen. In fact, phosgene, that is COCl2, is a poisonous gas. Tear gas is also a little bit poisonous, Cl3NO2. Then my mustard gas, my mustard gas, this is also poisonous gas, that is Cl, CH2, CH2, S, CH2, CH2, Cl. There is sulfur in the middle, CH2, CH2, Cl on both sides. Okay. So the next important thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.